Hello. So I'm ready to teach, so let's start. Today we're going to finish post-op complications. It's part two of a series. Okay, so post-op complications, part two. So thrombophlebitis is the first one we're going to talk about. The pathophysiology, it's an inflammation of the vein that's often accompanied by a clot. The symptoms are vein inflammation, aching or cramping pain, veins feel hard or cord-like, and they have an elevated temp. And you can see the obvious difference between these two legs. Okay, so treatment. We need to monitor for legs for swelling, the inflammation, the tenderness, the venous distension, cyanosis, and if they're present, we need to notify the MD. We need to elevate the legs at least 30 degrees, um, encourage the use of TEDs, and you need to remember that you take TEDs off at least twice a day um, to wash and inspect the legs. And then we're going to use the sequential compression stockings as the doctor orders them. Of course, we're going to provide range of motion every two hours. We're going to encourage ambulation. The sooner they get up after surgery, the better. Um, and don't allow them to just dangle their legs for very long. Instruct them not to sit in one position for an extended period of time. And of course, the other one is give anticoagulants as necessary, as ordered. I did not put that on the screen because that depends on the doctor. Next one is periolic ileus. Um, what's the patho of this? It's when the GI tract does not resume its forward movement of the bowel contents after surgery or anesthesia or bowel manipulation. So this is when you are past that time period where the gut should start having bowel sounds and they don't. So the signs and symptoms are they're going to be vomiting post-op, they're going to have abdominal distension, and there's not going to be any bowel sounds, and they're not going to pass gas or flatus. So treatment is to monitor their INO, maintain them on MPO status until the bowel sounds return. Um, understand that as long as the bowels aren't moving, as long as that gut isn't moving, anything in the gut will come up or anything that we put in there will come up. So don't mistakenly give them food thinking, oh, it'll get better if they eat. It won't. It will make them sick. Maintain the patency of the NG if the doctor has ordered it. Encourage the patient to get up and walk. The more they walk, the sooner that will happen. Um, administer IV fluids as ordered, and then of course there are meds that will increase the motility. The big one being Regulin, it's metoprolite. Look up the generic for Regulin, I'm sorry, I'm not able to say it this morning. And that's it on it. Of course, you're going to monitor their bowel sounds. Wound infection. It occurs three to six days after surgery. Uh, the wound can become infected due to poor sterile technique, or it can be contaminated wound before surgery. Um, symptoms are fever, chills, warm, tenful, tender, painful, and inflamed incision, edematous skin at the incisions, and tight skin um, and around the sutures and an elevated WBC count. I've given you a picture of a foot wound here that's infected. So treatment, monitor their temp, monitor the incision for signs of infection and maintain patency of drains and assess the drainage for color, amount and consistency. Now that's the treatment, but on the left-hand side of the screen, I gave you the signs of infection. The wound is not approximated at the suture line. There's edema or bleeding. There's redness, there's erythema, and the drainage 
it's thick, it's yellow, green, or brown. It depends on what's in that infected drainage as to what color it's going to be, okay? Um, more likely than not, it's going to have a foul smell. So those are the signs of infection. So wound dehiscence and evisceration. Dehiscence pathophysiology is, it's the separation of the wound edges at the suture line and it occurs six to eight days after surgery. Understand dehiscence is a sign of infection, not approximated suture line. Do you catch the connection here? Dehiscence is a sign of infection. Evisceration patho is when the wound comes open and part of the internal organs protrude or come completely out of the incision. Now, evisceration can be a continuation of dehiscence of the wound not healing and that causes the evisceration. Both occur commonly with obese clients or those with poor wound healing. I, of course, had to choose the most gross picture for evisceration for you. Wound evisceration is an emergency. So the treatment for evisceration is to call for help, stay with the client, place them in low fowlers with their knees bent. Their head needs to be up and their knees need to be bent. We need to decrease the amount of pressure or tension on that incision. And if they're flat, that makes the abdomen taut and tight and it'll pull on that incision and we don't want that. Cover the wound with sterile normal saline dressing and monitor vitals for signs and symptoms of shock. Prepare them for surgery. As soon as you see this, you need to take their water away take their food away. They are going to be going to surgery um, and document the occurrence. Now, there are things that are non-life threatening that are post-op complications, and that's what I'm going to cover now. Constipation, one of the main ones, the more common one that we see after surgery. It's infrequent passing of stool. It's the failure to pass the stool within 48 hours after surgery. The signs and symptoms are absence of bowel sounds, abdominal distension, anorexia, headache, and nausea. Now, I want you to pay attention. There is a difference between this and the periolic ileus. We have the absence of bowel sounds, abdominal distension. Those are similar. We have the anorexia, the headache, and the nausea, but they are able to go. They do have stool there. It's just not coming out. There's a difference. The treatment is to assess bowel sounds and then encourage the three things that we know that affect um, stool passing. That would be fluid intake of at least 3,000 milliliters a day. To encourage ambulation, the more they move, the better. Encourage foods high in fiber, things that require the gut to work to get it to move. And then lastly, administer stool softeners and laxative disorder. Now, if they're on a strong opiate, you need to understand that's what you're fighting because the opiate is what's causing them to be constipated besides their inactivity and they're not taking in food correctly. So if you can encourage them to wean off a little bit of the opioid so that they can go. Um, if it's a real serious surgery and they need the pain relief, by all means, give them the opiate. But if it's one that they could let the opiate go for a little bit so they could have a bowel movement, that would be all the better. Urinary retention, another very common complication after surgery. This happens when there is an involuntary accumulation of urine in the bladder as a result of muscle tone due to anesthetics or opiate analgesics. 
The signs and symptoms are the inability to avoid restlessness and diaphoresis, lower abdominal pain, a distended bladder, hypertension, um, and on percussion, the bladder sounds like a drum. So treatment, you're gonna monitor their voiding you're going to assess bladder for distension by palpation and using the bladder, bladder scanner if you need to. Um, encourage ambulation, encourage fluid intake, assist the client to void by helping them to stand if they're a male, uh, providing privacy because some of us can't go if we're in a room with other people. Um, pour warm water over the peritoneum and allow the client to hear or allow the client to hear running water to promote voiding. Again, this is similar to some of the things that you know stimulate yourself when you're at home. I know that if I go into the kitchen to start supper, if I haven't gone to the bathroom and I go in there to wash my hands, instinctively, my bladder will say, hey, let's go. Um, and then of course, contact the surgeon and catheterize the client as prescribed. And that is the last resort. You need to have tried everything else. And that is the end of the post-op complications. I hope this has helped you and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.